We will be looking at periodic trends, but first a word from our sponsor. And that would be Fredco Industries, a leader in making the sort of stuff that you buy on the TV and not in a store, because let's face it, it's junk. Their newest piece of junk is a Carbonomatic. Thank you, thank you folks, you're a wonderful audience. This is another presentation of Fred Coat Industries and I am indeed the founder, Fred R. Slick. And today, we are going to show you for the first time ever on any stage or any video cast, the newest invention in communication. Yes, are you excited or what? Beneath this handkerchief is the newest invention in communication. And to help me introduce this wonderful product, I wanna welcome for the first time my own son in the business, little Freddie. Let's give him a hand. Yo, yo, daddy-o, I'm here to help you with your show. Have you also grown tired of trying to write letters with a piece of charcoal? Doesn't make a very good impression. Gets all over your hands. It's just a real mess. Are you also tired of having to crush your own berries just to sign a check or try to write a letter? It just doesn't work very well. Well, audience, this is the moment little Freddie and I have been waiting for to introduce the one, the only, Carbonomatic, the newest revolution in communication. It's sleek, it's stylish, using a patented secret formula of carbon to write on paper. And not only do you get the Carbonomatic, you get the special patented eraser tip. And do we stop there? No, we give you more than that. We give you one in a stylish color. And is that enough? No, we're giving you more and more. A longer desk version. So you have the compact version, the desk version. Isn't that just great? Yes, the Carbonomatic. Not only is it a revolutionary piece of communication equipment, it started a whole new trend in communication. <laughs> you know, but as president of the Chem Club, this table reminds me of the periodic table. And when you say trend, that makes me think of trends in the periodic table. Let's take a look. We know how to find quite a bit of information about individual elements from the periodic table. And some of the trends are obvious, like that of electrons being added from left to right and going down the periodic table. Some trends are not so obvious, such as electronegativity. Remember that electronegativity is the measure of an atom's ability to attract an electron. How tightly does it hang on to its electrons? Now looking at the periodic table, you can see that the highest electronegativity is in the upper right hand corner and the lowest is in the lower left hand corner. We know that ions on the left hand side of the periodic table are positive and easily give up their electrons the ones on the right become negative. They take up other atoms' electrons. So that certainly jives with what we know already, but going down the periodic table, the electronegativity drops because the electrons are more and more shielded from the positive nucleus. Here's another trend that we're familiar with. How can you tell how many electrons are available for bonding from the periodic table? You know from looking at the periodic table that the valence electrons are going to be groups 1 and 2 in blue and groups 13 through 18 in purple to make an octet of 8 electrons. The trend on the periodic table for relative sizes of atoms and ions goes against your intuition. But what we know about electronegativity helps us out. You would think that as you went from left to right across the periodic table that maybe obviously the atoms would become larger. But since the atoms on the right hand side 
of the periodic table hold on to their electrons more tightly, have higher electronegativity, this means that the electrons stay closer to the nucleus. And again, as we go down the periodic table, the radii increases because of shielding of the electrons from the positive nucleus. Now let's look at the relative size or ionic radii of ions. Remember that the cations or positive ions have lost electrons, so the ion is smaller than its related atom. And anions, or negative ones, have gained electrons, so that ion is going to be larger than the original atom. But the ionic trend is the same as atomic. Daddy, I hate to tell you this. This is just a pencil. Freddy, I can't believe you're saying this. I just can't believe it. Well, this is a crisis for Fredco Industries. But they'll be back slinging junk before you know it. So, by way of review, let's look at those trends again. Electronegativity, which is the attraction of an atom for an electrons. The highest electronegativity is upper right, lowest, lower left in the periodic table. How about electrons available for bonding? Remember, those S and P block atoms will always be the valence or outermost electrons for bonding. So groups 1, 2, 13 through 18 will contain those valence electrons. Relative sizes. Now electronegativity and the addition of more electrons combined causes this trend to be the opposite of electronegativity. The larger atoms or ions are lower left, smaller, upper right. And again with ions, since positive ions are on the left of the periodic table have lost electrons, they're smaller than they would be as atoms. Negative ions have gained electrons, so they are relatively larger than they would be. But overall, the trend is still the same as with the atoms. All you chemists out there, thanks for your attention. And I think you can see from this the importance of trends in the periodic table.